Hello, everybody. We are live. Welcome to Step Into the Portal, the BBT. I'm the Brant. I'm Brienne. <laughs> and we are playing tabletop games, BBT. See, that's how it works. Uh, so we're here on Wednesdays playing various uh, games. And today, I'm kind of excited. We're bringing a game that's not even out yet. This is Free Radicals from WizKids Games. They were nice enough to send it to us. So we're going to play through. I'm going to teach uh, the game. We're going to play through a game. And then uh, we'll kind of give our... Initial impressions is probably the best we can do with a game like this, uh, but let people kind of know, and that's going to be our plan for the BBT uh, going forward. So thank you if you're joining us or watching afterward. If you are with us, you can give a comment uh, in the stream or you can give a comment down below. But either way, go ahead and uh, like the video. Give us the little thumbs up. That uh, helps us out with a small channel and everything here. Um, are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. Uh, so... The fun part of this game is that you've got 10 unique factions. So there's 10 different, basically, ways you can play. They're all asymmetric, uh, which has been a big popular thing in games in the last three or four years, asymmetry. Did you play Terra Mystica? I did, once. Yeah, so that's the I like one. that one. I feel like that's kind of where like it started with that game, and there's a lot of asymmetry there. Um, the theme of Free Radicals is these Free Radicals kind of come out of space or out of the sky... And they are these this catalyst by which Earth becomes a utopian environment. So there's no more war, no more famine, no more boring jobs. <laughs> day to day, busy, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so now we're in a utopian society where now we're just like exercising our joy for creativity and whatever things we want to do. So our factions are like competing for almost like boasting rights of, hey... I went and had a lot of fun today doing this is kind of the idea. So the points are more like a yeah. like a, a friendly competition than a you know all out war between factions. It's not that kind of yeah. idea. So hey, here I am at yeah. We were a little bit later. That was uh, getting all the tech stuff together and eating some quick dinner. So there's that. Oh wait, we should have been here. I started on the wrong one. So we'll wave again. Hello. Just in case you can't tell us apart, I'm the Brant. <laughs> this is Brienne. <laughs> awesome. So we'll go down to the table. That was my bad. I had the other screen up. All right. There you go. Yeah, Here we are. But actually, it probably worked because I was pointing out a lot of these pieces. All right. So I am playing the adventurers. So we're going to adventure around the world and try to find things. So I'm kind of playing an exploration character. And you are? The Underground. Oh. A street art and dance crew. That's awesome. The Scoundrels. <laughs> street art. I love it. Oh, you're scoundrels. That's an interesting yeah, thing for scoundrels and leet speak. I guess you can be uh, be scoundrels there either way. All right. Um, so I'm going to kind of teach. I'm just going to teach our two factions. There's eight other factions. These boards both can flip. So there's five colors. Each color has two factions. Each faction comes with a sheet. Unlike some games like uh, Root or Vast or some of those where it's like, whoa, I've really got to learn. They're pretty straightforward. So these are not too bad. So I'll teach our two factions and kind of the main game. So we are trying to get this score the most points. Yes. All right? I'm good at Over that. 12 rounds. We're going to play tw exactly 12 rounds. So we're each going to get 12 turns. And then there's some final scoring that we have here. Um, so what are we going to do? Each of us are going to take our turn. Generally, they're in four parts. Um, this is our common area. These are our knowledge tracks. So even though we're only playing the purple and yellow factions, the other three factions exist. So we can have them gain knowledge. The reason is, as you move other factions up, you still gain the bonuses. And if you cross this line with a faction other than yourself, you get the bonus that's there. Also, by the moving person, the... The person who triggered the faction to cross that line... Correct. Gets it. Right. That's exactly it. So there's a bonus there, as well as there's final scoring for who's in first, second, and third. So by moving the other factions up, you keep the other person behind you. In a four-player game, I admit that's a little more competitive than in a two-player mm. game, but we can move the other factions, so that is that idea. So these tokens are favor tokens. We also have, oh gosh, hydrogen, titanium, and carbon, if I remember correctly. So that's these resources, as well as credits um, that we can use to spend on things. And then we have these data cards. So these are common to both of us, uh, or all of us, if there was more people playing. Our factions and some of our other components are unique. Yeah, you've got your own pile, and I've got my pile here, so we don't have to cross the streams. <laughs> uh, I think these two titanium are yours uh, from the right, start. Cool. Uh, I think it shows it right there. Unless that's supposed to be hydrogen. The hydrogen is white on the cards, but yellow in the game. And mm -hmm. it does it just shows a color. <laughs> oh, does it say it here? 
Uh, yeah, titanium. Perfect. Okay. Um, I am titanium. All right. Look at that. All right. So what we're going to do on this column board is we are able to, um, I want to say it's ascend, but I forget the word. On my faction board, it just says build, but there's a different word. So we can basically build these structures. So these buildings don't exist until we build them. Uh, once you build them uh, by playing these data cards, you put a cube on it, and now that building is open. And then other people can go there using their visit action. And when they use their visit action, you will gain the bonus. They will gain that. Each of us control one of these buildings. And so if somebody goes there, you can do your action instead of the action that's there. They're pretty straightforward. They're basically gain resources. This symbol here is gain faction cubes, gain favor. So you gain any cube, any two cubes you want. So you can kind of complete your sets because you're trying to make mm -hmm. sets out of the favor cubes. Um, you can... Build a building twice, in which case you would gain double the bonus, or I can build it and you can build it and we each gain the bonus when the other person goes there. So you do not gain the bonus when you go there. However, when you go, when somebody goes to the building, uh, they add their favor cube and then you get it. So if you use my building, not only do I get the bonus, I also get one of your favor cubes. Okay. So that's kind of this common area and these knowledge tracks. This is the turn tracker. Your marker is on there because you're going to be the first player. So at the start of the round, you move that up, except the first round. So that's how we know. And then this is the scoreboard um, for just our points. And so we're each at zero and we can move down uh, everything there. Ooh, nice. Awaken buildings. Thank you to Matt. Nice. I appreciate it. Uh, you're awakening the building. I, I, ascend just didn't quite sound right, but you awaken. Awakening buildings makes sense. Right, yeah, I mean... Awakening their potential, I guess, is the idea. Um, there's that. Okay, so that's what's common to us. So then I'll teach our factions. I'll teach yours first, and then I'll teach mine. So you are the underground. So you have all these different uh, characters, these scoundrels, we'll call them, uh, that you have. So on your turn, which actually is common to both of us, there's this prestige... So whenever you gain the prestige token, or uh, yeah, we'll just call it token, you gain a victory point. And at the start of the turn, if at the start of your turn, if you have it, you gain another victory point. If you're ever supposed to gain it and you already have it, you get two victory points. So both of us have the first action of just check to see if you have the prestige. And it can just be in the middle of the table. Nobody has to own it. It's not a first player marker. It's just a way to score more points. Uh, it's kind of like boasting rights within the game. We did something really cool. Um, so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do your actions. So you're going to have four of these uh, underground cards in your hand. There's two of each character. And you're going to play those cards one at a time. Each time you're either going to do the faction of that character, character, or you're going to gain a favor cube of their color. I don't know what happens on this polymath. The polymath might gain one of any color. Um... Is you can't do it with the polymath. Here. Okay, you may not do this with the polymath. Ability. Nope, okay, I, I just noticed that, so the polymath is the different color. So you'll play your four cards out, picking what you want to do. Then at the end, kind of towards the end of your round, the next thing you'll do is you'll pay two credits to move something up to level two, which now allows you to use either of their actions. It's not both, and it's not only le the level you're on. You can use anything going backward. When you play their card, you can play three to go to level three once you're at level two. Um, and then you draw four cards. So your turns are pretty straightforward. And I think that you just go through your deck, which is interesting because I feel like the four at the end, you're going to get two, and then you're going to shuffle and draw two more. So I think you're going to play that out. I don't, you can read there while I'm teaching this one to make sure it's not like you're supposed to shuffle at some point. But I think that's it. They also show five cards there, so maybe I lied. It says draw five as your starting hand on here. Okay. But it's draw four each round, I guess. Maybe. Okay, so maybe... Oh, do you play four of your five? So play, play all, all cards. all one at a time. But then draw is times four here. Interesting. Yeah. So I think you just must play five on your first turn, and then you get four. You have abilities to get more cards, mm -hmm. so I think then you could play more cards on your turn. Well, then, then you're using a card to play a card, but you're getting points. So there's that. My faction is the Adventurers. It's basically what you think. I've got a Cleric, a Rogue, a Druid, a Mage, and a Fighter. So I am like the D&D &D characters. Uh, Polymath is an exception. You play your whole hand. Start with five cards. 
Matt watched John Getz Games, just put it up today. He did a playthrough of this, so he's got that down a little bit ahead of me. Thank you. Thank you, I didn't, Matt. I didn't realize that uh, John had used this faction. I didn't get a chance to watch his, so there's that. Then draw four cards. Yep, so I think there's just ways to get more. Okay. So it's just always play all. You're not guaranteed four. All right, so on my turn, what I'm going to do is I do the prestige thing, then I do my actions. So um, I know the first turn I start with five action points. Oh, if fighters on the board start with five action points. So I have the fighter here. Um, so I get to do that. I'm pretty sure mine said start with five. Yep, yeah, okay. So then I can spend my action points. So I'm spending action points to move things. So I'm, they're all in this base and they can move orthogonally. When they move to a space, they remove the cube. When they remove the cube, it just shows that I went to that space. And mine, it's a little hard to see, but they have the symbols of the various um, characters. And so if that character visits that space, I get the bonus from that character. So I can't ever collect both bonuses because only one character is going to go there. If no characters pictured on there or I don't use the right character the cube just goes away and I lose my opportunity so I want to move in certain ways I cannot explore blank spaces I have to wait till they're revealed and when I reveal them I put cubes on them I don't collect those cubes because they're mine they're just markers um, so I can I can move I can also play one of my data cards at any time and I can swap the two characters wherever they are so like this is yellow and blue so I can swap yellow and blue for free I can do favor, so um, I can gain one of the character that's on this recon space, or if the fighter's here, which is purple, I gain one of any, because I don't gain my own. So that's the benefit of this being here. Um, I can collect, so there's different symbols. I can collect, revel, uh, revel, sorry, defend, battle, if these symbols are on the spaces, and then they give me the various effects that you had, gain the prestige, and this one lets me um, look at cards, move up the knowledge track, gain resources. Um, and then down here, I can do my build, I can do my visit, I can do my draw. So all these actions just cost cost action points and I'm moving my characters around the board. And then um, I can exchange a character that's on recon. So I can switch two characters at the end of my turn. And then if anybody other than the fighters here, I get to reveal two tiles. So just any two tiles can be revealed. Um, otherwise I don't and I place a purple cube on each one that I revealed. Uh, and then at the start of my turn, going back, if the fighter is here, I get four action points. If they're on the board, I get five. So they get me wild favor and some other bonuses, but if they're out here, it's a little bit better for me. So I'm just going to basically spend these action points to move around and collect resources and do various things. The only other thing of note is that whenever we use these cards, you can you draw cards from here. Whenever we use these cards, we replace... But if a card doesn't have yellow or purple on it, it immediately gets discarded and we replace with a new card. So all these cards will always be useful to one of us, at least. Okay. So that's where those cards come from. Play 12 rounds. At the end of the game, the person who's the highest on the knowledge track gets seven points. Second place gets three, including the other factions. So they compete with us for those points. It's friendly ties. The person who has the most favor cubes gets seven points. Second gets three. Every set of four cubes of the other colors is worth two points. And every three of the other resources. Uh, does that include cards? I can't see too far. I think so, yeah. And that gives uh, a, point, a third of a point for each one, right? Uh, the building is this gray symbol? Yeah, it's I think that's just like building cards. I think these are data cards or just building oh, okay. cards. Yeah, it's weird because it's, it's not, not the, the same, same as, as the bags. card backing, yeah. but... Yeah, I'll say it's the cards. That is the game. All right. So you are up first. Um, Matt, if you can tell us, how is the lighting? I actually softened the lighting, but it's a little dark for us to see. But if you can tell us how it looks for you, it's been a little bright in the videos, I felt like. So I tried to soften, but it is a little dark for us. <laughs> you are up first. Okay. 12 rounds is pretty fast. So the two cards I have in my hand, how do I make use of them? Oh, what sorry. So when you do a building, uh, what, what did we call this? <laughs> Awaken action, you spend that card uh, to open that building. Okay. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter if these ones aren't my fact. Like, 
said that these ones that have the yellow symbol are related to my faction, but ones that don't have it, like, I can still be using them? It's oh, Brian's basement is here. To me. Uh, Brian, the good news is you can just rewind the video and watch the explanation, so... Not there. Uh, it's a great question. I'm pretty sure that you have to use... It has to match your faction color. So, the cards that don't have your faction color, you're going, you're still using, but see how you have abilities right here that say spend a card to do something? That's what you're going to use the cards in your right. hand. That so I don't currently your... can't build any buildings. I need something to draw one of these cards. Yeah, these but cards don't have good my access. color. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to read my sheet to decipher these symbols. A little out of focus. Yeah, I've been having issues with my focus. Of course. Have one money. Okay. Sometimes if I just change it a little bit gets sharper. Okay. All right, well, I'll start off with the runner gets two credits. says play all my cards, but we're alternating actions, right? No, you take <laughs> no, your full I turn. Do, I do it. Oh, I do yep. everything. Yep, okay. so on my turn, you can be planning your turn in the future. Perfect. It's obviously harder to do now. Uh, upgrade comes at the end. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know what everything needs, but let's try the hacker. Gets two resources of my choice. I don't know what I'll use them for, so I'll get the ones I'm missing. Uh, okay. So, advancing knowledge scores looks like one point per and two oh. and three. Yeah, sorry, I should explain that a little bit better. Do besides that? Um, one of my you should have does that. Yep, so when you advance, you pay the credits at the top. Yep. to gain the points underneath it. Mm -hmm. So no matter who you advance, you're going to gain. If you advance somebody else past this line, you also gain, uh, you get to draw a card. Okay. All righty. Well, um... Once you pass this line, you get to do... Oh, you gain a favor cube, and you do that. Oh, do these ones give you favor cubes as soon as you cross? I may have missed that. Yeah, so as soon as you move up, you also gain a favor cube of that color, as long as you don't move your own. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right, and I can, so I'll do the leader then, which I'll pay one, I guess, move myself up this track, gain a point. Um... And I'll use the polymath to take the prestige token. I'll gain a point. And the teacher lets me bring one of these back for round two, put it on top of the deck. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of funny. Means I draw it next round, but I was going to draw something else. Well, yeah, you could use that to gain a red favor cube. I think I'll do that. If you just didn't like yeah. the right. your options. Oh, at least get me something concrete. So I'll do that. All right, so I did everything. Um, that was all five. And... Oh, thank you, Matt. I'm sorry. It's been it's been like a week and a half since I played. So. Whenever you move somebody, you get the previous. It's not when you cross that threshold. 
So like, if you move anybody up in this box, you get a favor. Once they cross here, you get a favor and draw a card. So you always get a bonus. You look to the thing to the left. Does that make sense? So, like, if you were moving blue up, you'd get a favor, get a favor, get a favor, get a favor and draw a card, get a favor and draw a card, get a favor and draw a card, get, I think it's two favor. Okay. So you're always getting the thing to the left. Okay. Thank you. Get a favor you. comes from this line here, is saying get a favor. Correct. So as long as you're in these three boxes, like this big box here, you get that bonus. Once you cross to here, you get this bonus. So yes, when I, I just did it, I got a point, but I also need to take a cube or something. Uh, no, because you moved your own. If oh, you move so anybody move else, else, you get a favor okay. of their color. Perfect. Yeah, that was silly. That's It's obvious now that I look at the board, I just forgot. <laughs> Which really should be my job teaching the game, but... So good. I've only played it once, so I will at least... And it was like a week and a half ago. Which, for most people, would be like, oh, so you've played two other games since then? No, 20. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the last week and a half. I've played a lot of games. Whereas probably if you'd gone the week and a half before, I played like 25 games of Marvel Champions and two other games. <laughs> oh, it's right, me. So I, oh, so I can actually, I can upgrade as well, and then I draw. So I'll, be, yep. I'll pay these two to um, upgrade a character. Uh, don't know what these are. Let's try and upgrade this. Uh, Arbiter. What is... Okay, yes, thank you, Matt. You are saving me here. I, I don't know. It's like I'm ready to go with the game, and then it's those little details, and I'm like, oh, wait, I just said it wrong. Uh, this one just threw me off because it's just each individual faction. I didn't understand that they start with five cards, but then draw four. But it's all explained on the sheet, so it's it's straightforward. But thank you. But I do generally agree. It's silly to make a video where you're teaching people to play and then give them the wrong rules. <laughs> this is more of a live play, not an official teaching video. So it gives you a feel for the game. What would the game be like if you played with mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna take my turn so the first thing i'm gonna do is move my rogue because all these characters count as in the base so i'm gonna move the rogue up here and the rogue gains two carbon and a card draw so i'm gonna take this two carbon this cube goes back and i'm gonna draw a card and these three have my faction on them mine is this one here which doesn't seem to exist. So this one's pretty good. I like this exchange. So I'm gonna take this card right here, which also needs carbon. So I refill. That one doesn't have our factions on it. That one doesn't have our factions on it. That one has yellow. So now I have this data card. Then I am gonna use one that has the revel so i'm going to revel and i'm going to pay my credit and move myself up as well so that i'm on the knowledge track uh, then i'm going to move my druid over here which gives me three credits and I'm going to move my mage here, which gives me four blue favor. That's intense. Four blue favor. Okay. And finally, I can gain a different favor. So I want to play one of these, huh? So I just get a free exchange of character with a different character. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. I guess I just move down here. I will move this cleric down here and gain three red cubes. So it is definitely a cube collecting game. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then at the end of the turn, I can swap two. 
So I'm going to swap these two. Oh, actually, I don't need red. So let me swap a different color. I'm going to swap green with mine. And then if any character other than the fighters on recon, reveal two tiles. So let's reveal this corner one, which is blue. That's no good. And this corner one. That's got red and green on it. And then we put cubes on those. And that is the end of my turn. I'm just going to move that back up to five. Go ahead. First thing you're going to do is move that up to round two. Okay. All right. So then I have the prestige thing. So that means I get two points. One point. One point. Two if you were, like, if you I did an action, get it, let you well, gain I already it. have. Yep. One point. Um, I'm going for the no point strategy. That's a good, that's a good idea. Um, I will play the arbiter to get one credit and draw one underground card. Uh, then I will play the runner to get two credits. Um. And uh, so the only way I can do awaken one of these buildings looks like is level two teacher. Mm -hmm. Already used him once. Uh, Seems to be one here, but that's a lot of work to get there. Three is awakened building one two eight. Okay. Well, I will try using the activist, which upgrades character. Does that mean do it for free? Because normally it costs two, but like this action is upgrade a character. Mm, does it specify on there? It doesn't say anything about payment. It just says upgrade a character one level. Mm. It is a good question. Uh, I. What does it say during the round on your sheet for upgrade? Uh, does it say upgrading is paying a cost? Like on the upgrade once per round step, it says you may pay credits to upgrade. Where's this? No, just says I think you get so to I do it for free. Then. All right, yeah. I will upgrade the teacher. So that I'll be able to do buildings someday. Matt will answer all of our rules questions. So all right, <laughs> um, I've got the broker to gain a favor of my choice. I'm not understanding what the point of the different colors of favors are, besides that I'm trying to collect one of each. Is there anything besides that? As far as you're why just I trying to catch one, one of over each. The nope. Other? Nope. Right. It's that simple. Well, then I will take a purple one. Uh, my last one is a tagger. Visit any awakened building. But there are no awakened buildings, so I guess let's take a green cube. <laughs> Matt says, points are a capitalistic plot. Don't fall for it. <laughs> right. Um... And I can upgrade character, I guess, with this money. Um, hmm. I will try upgrading my... Yes, Matt, I will gladly buy you a coffee if My we meet in person hurt. ever. I won't drink coffee with you. It's your turn. All right, so I get five action points. I reset at the start because I have... My non-fighter here. My fighter is on the board, so I get five action points. 
So this one wants red to go here. I already have a lot, so I'd really rather have green go there. So let me see if I can switch. You cannot switch green with anything. Is there a way to do that otherwise? No, I would have to draw a card. Interesting. And then this one wants blue over here. Blue can switch with red. That is rude. These cards are rude. Um, so yellow and red can swap. Yeah, it's not getting me much of anywhere. All right, so I may need to take a turn to do other stuff. So I can build a building. In order to build this one, I need titanium. So I need to be on a crown, which I am here. So I'm going to spend one to gain titanium. And then I'm going to spend two to build, which is awaken. So I'm going to awaken this building. I'm just going to set it off to the side here. I get five points for awakening it. And then I put a purple cube on that building over here which is you can exchange one resource for three others. And I get a titanium when somebody does that. So note, I didn't say that. You get victory points when you awaken buildings. Next. And so and when you awaken buildings, six. it's awakening one from your hand. Correct. The cards in your yep. hand. You pay the cost on it from here. And it looks like yours would be you gain whatever the other color is. Because uh, this one had to have my color, which is purple, so there's that. Well. All right. Um, so exploring is difficult for me right now because I want green to go there and I want blue to go there, but I don't have cards to exchange. So I could go get that card so that I could exchange, but that's two to draw a card. Oh, by the way. You don't seem to have the question mark symbol. This is draw a card from the face up. The question mark is draw from the face down cards. But you don't seem to have a question mark, so. Okay. <laughs> Yours are good. See, I know some rules. All right, uh, wow. I guess I have these credits, so I'll keep moving up these tracks. So I'm gonna pay one and I'm going to move green up this track and gain a green cube, and then, I don't know. I'm gonna pay one, then I can gain, oh, I have green there, huh? I'll pay one here, then I will move, uh, I don't need blue, don't need red, oh, I need yellow, oh man, all right. I'll move you one space up the track. All right, that is. So I don't get a point for you moving me up the track. No, oh, I get the points. So I get a point for moving the other people up the track. Oh, so you get a point for moving the others up the track, mm -hmm. and you get a cube. Whereas when you move yourself, you just get the point, but you put yourself in. Yep. Good for the end. All right. Yep. Interesting. All right, so now I can swap two of these. So I want green to come over here, so I'm going to swap out red, because I want to leave purple on the board. Then since red is here, I can reveal two new tiles. So let's reveal here. We got purple, so that's good. We also got yellow that can go there for lots of resources. And we'll reveal this corner one. This is a little bit of a pain. Oh, I should have mentioned, too, when I set my board up, there are tons of tiles. So there's a lot. Like you're with the explorers, you're not like, oh, I know the 20 tiles. Let me go find that one. There's probably, I'm just going to go with 40 tiles here. So you're playing with a lot of different tiles every time, which is kind of neat. It really makes an exploration. You don't know what you're finding. I am done. It is all you. Okay. And we'll move this up to round three. Uh, you know, I'm at a bit of a bind here. One, Cat poop coffee. One money. Yeah, what are those cats and called? No cards I can use. Only one. I have that game downstairs. Coffee Traders. It's the 
the story of fair trade coffee and it has those cats that you make the coffee out of one of these scoundrels can get data cards and i guess this one could if i have good data okay um so uh visiting an awakened building so you have a building now what does it do yep so if you go there you can exchange one of your resources for any one for any three and i gain a titanium when you go there and i get a favor cube you give me one of your favor cubes <clears throat> so you have a lot of resources so right um uh, civet cats yes figure out a way to get some cards um yeah, I don't understand coffee, so cat poof coffee is even more confusing so for me. I guess I'll use the polymath to take the prestige token to score two points. Nice. Um, I will use the uh, the hacker to get to pay one to advance up the track. Um, and, uh, what the heck, I'll try advancing blue so I get a cube, <sighs> since I need a blue cube, and I get a resource, I'll take a hydrogen. All right, and I've got two cards left. Oh. I'll use this leader to get a red cube. Because I can't afford to do the track. And teacher lets me take a card. Oh, that's cool now that you got a big deck of cards, right? Yeah. You can put anything on top. So now it makes more sense than the first turn. Yeah. Um, okay. going to draw all these cards which means i know already i'm going to get the things i'm missing so i will take the activist and put them on top That's all my things, so I can't afford to upgrade, so draw the cards. So what's the deal with the fact that one of the buildings is actually on my sheet? So the fact of that is that if, when this building is activated, if you go here, you can do the ability down here, which is draw a card instead of this ability. So instead of trading two carbon for four points, you can draw a card, one of your cards. Cool. It feels like a... Mm -hmm. A bonus thing as opposed to a, like, you must build that building to make your, you know, faction work. Because you may never get the card, so. <laughs> right. All right. It is back to me. I get five actions. I do not have the prestige, which I may need to think about taking from you there. But so far, not happening. I am going to move my druid over and get a point and two credits. Um, I am going to move my rogue over and gain one of each resource. I'm going to move my fighter south, and the fighter will gain two hydrogen, which that is one little mistake they made. They show the hydrogen as white, but then the cylinders here are yellow are probably shiny on the camera um and then i've got two points left so i can't go there 
all these spaces have nothing on them. I could visit my own building, or I could try to build a new building, which would be this one that I already built. <laughs> Got it. Well, that's weird. All right, so I am going to revel on this space, and I'm going to spend a coin, oh man, and move green up to get one point and a green favor. And then I can gain one red. How am I going to get blue over there? Um, if I move yellow, can blue and yellow exchange places? No. Don't have that one. All right, so I will do that again. And this time I'll move myself up to stay in the competition. There, that is all my actions. Now I can swap two of these. Uh, so I'm going to swap. I'm going to swap yellow. And then I reveal two. So I'm going to reveal this one. And I'm going to reveal this one. Not good. Find me things I need. It's cool too, there's little icons. So like this one has the king icon, this one has the, the wine glass, this has the little um, ogre, so now, mm -hmm. or orc, whatever it is. So now I can battle there, that's how I get the prestige. So it's kind of neat, I can pay a coin to take that. Um, you if know. you're on one of those If I'm on that space, yeah, when I go on that space, I, could, I have to spend action points too, but it's just kind of a neat, like that the... Exploring has other elements than just gain resources, you know. All right, all right. All right so I revealed two, and I placed one on each, and it is your turn, round four. Okay, so I have the prestige token. I gain one point. Hey, you uh, told me you were doing the no point strategy, and <laughs> maybe I, I feel changed. lied to. Um, I will use the activist to upgrade the broker. Um, I will use the arbiter to gain one credit and this last card. Um, I will use the broker to spend that one credit and take three cards here. So I can take this bizarre, I'm not, I don't really know, but I can take three cards here. There you go. Um, just do it like that. Uh, I can uh, smell Kathy's cooking downstairs. You smell it? No, <laughs> Maybe it's not much of the... Yeah. Terrible. Um, okay, so that can be used for two points. Uh, <laughs> Matt's claiming I'm cheating by scoring points. Hmm. All right, and I'll use the activist to upgrade my hacker to level three. Because that's cool. Um, that is cool. And those favorite cubes for building. And... Um, Last one is the tagger who can visit an awakened building. Would you have one? I guess I still don't have one. These are your resources, and this is the pool. Correct. No, no, it's fine. I was just <laughs> didn't want it to get Separate. more confusing. Um. All right. Uh. I guess that means, well, if I visit it, it gives 
you a titanium and I get to swap some out. So I also get one of your favor, which would give me two of each, but I'm sure I'm going to get them at some point. Uh, oh, sorry. Do note when you want to move up here, it costs a resource and a coin, but you get two points. So just it increases. Um, sure, I'll visit your thing. Um, and I'll just... I'm just going to take a yellow cube from here. Hydrogen and a carbon. Like that. No money to upgrade. Nice project. Okay. Nobody can really step on the need. What can I purple switch with yellow, which would be going back there? All right, so I'm going to play this cast tower. It's a switch blue and red. That's just a free action. Then I'm going to spend one to move blue here, gain two titanium and a credit. It just is so many resources. The last game I remember, I was trying to get resources so hard. <laughs> then, how do I draw cards? Oh, I can pay two to just draw a card. That one still needs two carbon, though. So I could do that one. This one needs blue or purple. That one needs blue. I can also fight here, which I think I need to do. So I'm going to spend one and a credit, and I'm going to gain this. No! Which gives me one point. Is that 10? That is 10 there, right? Yeah. I'm going to lay that flat for the camera. So I can fight here because there's a little orc icon in the corner. Ogre, orc. I'm not really sure. Um, then... I don't know. What can I exchange? Yellow and red. That's what's off the table. That's all I have. So do I move somebody? I guess I do have the option to move to a space just to move. That seems weird. So we'll spend two, and we will take this card. And then I am not on a king tile, huh? And then we will spend our last one here to increase green another space and continue the points strategy <laughs> and take a green cube. And then I can swap to here. I don't like yellow there. Oh, but I could swap so that blue could get to a different spot. That makes sense. All right. And then I can flip two. You can take your turn. All right. Nothing for prestige. Red. The Arbiter to get one credit and another card. Um. So there should be a card here, right? Yep. That one can stay because it has my purple on it. So I can only use this card. Yep. Although I can still take it because I can use it to swap two characters. That says one point times green icon. Uh, which would be how far 
one, two, three, or four your knowledge level is. Your your knowledge level. Interesting. Um alright. So I will play my level three hacker. What? To activate a building. OP hackers OP. Um so I will awaken the mighty bazaar. Rather expensive on the resources. Uh, gives me seven points. And uh, I get two of the building's other color, which is blue. Excellent. Uh, we got some other stuff here. Um, I will use my uh, runner to get two credits. I will use my Broker, I guess, to spend a credit. Um, I'll just use the broker to get a green or a purple cube. Oh, what building did you open? Uh, the bazaar. Let's use the yellow cube on there. Yeah. Uh, and I will use my tagger to visit the bazaar. Nice. So that means I spend a card to get three money. Yep. Is that the thing here? So. You know, and this arrow dock that doesn't have my colors and get three money. That's six money. Then I can upgrade. So, uh, give me a resource. Going to upgrade my runner. Oh, it's me. My bad. All right, so I start with five action points. Um, and I can move. So that's going to be my first one. I'm going to move my cleric. I'm going to try not to say red. Move my cleric into there, and I gain any two cubes. So I'm going to gain, gain yellow and green. I definitely seem to gather cubes. Uh, then I'm going to move here with my fighter and get three credits. Then I'm going to spend two. And I'm going to awaken the arrow dock. So the arrow dock is where? Is it green? Spend two money and get one of each resource. <laughs> I got a lot of those. Um, but I'm going to get the four points, so I'm going to give up hydrogen and carbon. Because hydrogen and carbon make an aero dock. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that famous chemistry equation. Uh, so I get four points. Oh, and I missed my one point at the start of the turn. 
Uh, so now I have the arrow dock. That is there, and I have one action point left. So, what can I swap now? Red and yellow. Yellow and purple is not amazing. This whole red and yellow thing is bothersome. Oh, nope. <laughs> uh, okay. So, oh, I got my three credits. So I will do this, and I will increase mine by one and get one more victory point with my revel action, which is here. Um, I could have spent the coin for that, but it's okay. We'll do that. End of the turn, I'm going to swap my mage. Is that what I want to swap? Yep, my mage with my cleric. Done. And then uh, I reveal two. You can go. All right. Play the Arbiter to get a credit. And There's the card. Cards. Okay. Oh, I haven't been doing good. These all have names. The Lair, the Spire, Play the, the Polymath. Take the Prestige back. Round six, we're almost halfway through. Excellent. Um, and you gained a point when you took it, right? Yeah. And I'll play the Leader to move myself up the Knowledge Track. Gain one point. Uh, okay. Um. And I'll use the runner to get another credit and a resource. Garden. And the tagger. Oh, and it lets me visit a building. So. When you go to your own building, you don't get this little... Bonus. Correct. Uh, all right, well, I will visit then. Uh, I'll visit your arrow dock there okay. to get one of each resource. I'll take a favor and a hydrogen. Um, and... Uh, then I get to visit another building, so I will visit my own bazaar to get free money back. And I gotta get rid of a card to do that, so I'll get rid of this bazaar since I already have one. You already got one! <laughs> oh, yes! Uh, I get to upgrade one character. So, um, I should do that. I will upgrade uh, my upgrade my polymath. Yeah, that's fun. You've upgraded a lot. Uh, 
All right. Well, that's that. <coughs> okay. All right. My round six. I am going to first move up here to the spire. And I get three cards. Ooh. So I'm going to take these three. I do not need to switch yellow with red. That's why I already have a full hand out. One is a yellow. One is a purple. And there is a yellow. All right. So I get these three. Then I'm going to spend an action and I'm going to move blue here. Nope. I mage here to the forest. And I get two points for sending the mage to the forest. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's where the mage wants to be, apparently. All right. Then I. Do I want to do this? Nope. So I can switch those two and get more cards. Interesting. But I will instead spend a coin and a, an action point and take the prestige. God, jeez. And then I have all these. Um, but I need... get more cards mm, strange all right don't have a lot of ideas so I'm gonna switch those two so purple and green switch I will spend an action to move green here that lets me draw two more cards. So I'm going to take this one and this one. Those come out. <laughs> and then I'm going to spend one point to revel, which is going to cost me this and a hydrogen. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to revel and I'm going to move red up because I need a red favor token. And I gain one point. It is your turn. Okay. Uh. Well. I'm going to excuse myself to use the restroom. Okay. Excellent. I shall take the opportunity to cheat a whole ton. And only the people watching the stream will know. What is that? I'll take the opportunity to cheat a ton, and no yeah. one will know except the audience on the stream. All right. Uh, Okay. Well, I get three different upgrades, two activists, and the polymath can upgrade. Um, Blue Castle and the Grant Office are available. Grant Office can move up the knowledge track, which could be nice. Um, so, I'm going to use the polymath to upgrade my, uh, I'll upgrade the, uh, runner? And 
uh, I'll use the activist to upgrade my arbiter and use the activist to upgrade my broker I'll use my broker to get free money broker don't even know her and uh, a resource uh, a green cube from the pony mouth upgrade all right getting some cubes it's happening um I'll spend two to upgrade my tagger. Last four cards. You're good? I'm good. All right. I get one because I am prestigious, as we all know. Allegedly. Matt says, what's with the points, Brand? I thought you were cool. <laughs> I am scoring the points tonight. All right, so my first thing is I'm going to switch my fighter and my druid. Then I'm going to spend one and move the druid to the hamlet. I'm trying to do a really good job with the theme. <laughs> I understand it's not strong, but I will play to it. All right, then I'm going to pay one, and my fighter is going to explore the road. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it makes me laugh. <laughs> Explore the road. I mean, it makes sense. It's a road you haven't been on. Um, and then I'm going to spend one and do the collect action and gain a carbon because I am short on carbon. And then since I have carbon... Ooh, I need another carbon. All right, so I will spend one to gain another carbon. I'm wondering. Sure. All right, and then I will spend one here. Can I? Yep, I can revel there. So I'm going to revel. I'm going to move yellow up. Hey, that's me. So one and one gives me two points and a card and a yellow cube. So moving myself up the track now will get two points. Two points. Moving somebody else up the track. If I move green up the track, that would get a card and a cube. Correct. And two points. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take this one right there. I don't need to do that. <laughs> All right, and I can swap two of these. Who's going to go? Go ahead. So you moved Ooh. me up the track, even though it helped me. Yes. What is the benefit of that? I got two points because I moved you to here. I got one of your cubes, and I got to draw a card. But like, instead of doing green for yourself, you got the card. That's true. But you could have, okay. Yeah, I probably could have moved green. I, I yeah. moved you over me, and I didn't realize green was there. <laughs> I see. I'm kind of tracking where we are, but I'm not tracking where the others. And Fair I enough. Slipped. All but, right. Um, yeah. I will play the leader to move up the track here and I will do with green because I want that card. So uh, what card should it be? You ask? Well, glad you did. It's the hollow castle. Um and then I will use the Hacker to awaken said uh, 
hollow castle spin boost three awaken it get five points put a cube on the hollow castle and i will use the teacher to awaken oh that gets me two red cubes uh, the teacher will awaken and uh an arrow duck i guess Hydrogen and carbon, and uh, this goes on the arrow dock. Scored four points. And lastly, uh, Of the teacher, which I can use again. Well, cannot activate or awaken that building. I want a cube of my choice of these cards. Well, I feel like the Arbiter is a solid option, but. I think it's going to take. It's likely. Arbiter here. I'll go in my next round's hand. Got to be shuffled back. That is me? It is you! And I get a point. Then I am going to hmm. yeah, the only reason I don't have this one. I'm gonna build the hollow castle. Oh, that one has been built. Yeah, I built it. That is okay. So I'll spend these resources. And get four points. Go to 31. I will then spend one to move the rogue to the village. The rogue will gain three favor cubes. And then I will. Those, huh? So it's purple with yellow. So I can just switch those two. And I guess we will do that. All right. So I will switch purple with yellow. And then I will credits gain a credit there I will gain a credit and then I will spend that with this to move myself up get two points I'm sorry about that and then I'm gonna swap these two and reveal two it is all you. Okay, so I move this round marker up. Yeah. Uh, it's a square okay. round marker. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will play the arbiter to gain a point and a new card. Uh, I will play 
So I do the leader to move myself up the knowledge track, but it costs a titanium or it costs a carbon or it costs it costs where you're moving. Where I'm moving to, so it costs this carbon. Yes. Carbon plus some money. I get two points. Move up. Um, I will use the polymath to upgrade my tagger and get a green cube. I spent hydrogen and those are titanium, so I'm just gonna swap. I had either. Okay, I'll use my activist to upgrade the teacher. And then I will use well, three different buildings. That's cool. I will use my tagger to Bring one of these back into my hand. Oh, and then you still draw five or four. Got it. Uh, I need to use again. Uh, I guess. I will take the polymath and use the polymath to get purple cube upgrading the lowly activist. <laughs> and uh, that's that. All right, so gain a point some money for being awesome. I'll spend one move here that gives me four points my cleric goes to the lake <laughs> there you go maybe looking for excalibur or something for the fighter um so I need my cleric to go here don't have a swap for that so blue is gonna move here uh, mage moves to the tower all right we'll do that one two three And yes. I know. It's just points. Points, points, points. Uh, I'll move there. And then... And I don't know what to do. I will spend two. And I will go here, giving you one of my cubes. And you get a, a buck. And I'm going to discard this to get three credits. Ooh. And then I can swap with this one. Oh, so these two will swap. And then I'll look at this one. Is your turn. Round 10. So, did you say that if we both have this arrow dock or hollow castle, if I activate one, you would still get the bonus from me doing it? Or no, because I activated it myself? Uh, I would get the bonus. Okay. Sneaky. <laughs> it was more just the card I could build than the... That's the <laughs> Uh, oh no, that was this one. I built this one first. Just to be useful. Just gives you my cubes. Whatever, you've got tons of those anyway. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Well, uh, I can use the. Um, the teacher to visit three buildings. So I guess I'll visit all three that I have here, okay. which gets three money, but then spends it to get one of each resource and uh, a point per knowledge track, so five points. Uh, and you get stuff as well, yeah? Uh, I get, get two of your cubes and a hydrogen and a random card off the top of the deck. Okay. Well, you know I'm going to do it again nice. using my other teacher to do the same thing. <laughs> uh, I guess I need more of your cubes from over here. And I will use the broker to uh, spend the money to get some cards. Last thing, the activist. Spend card to get some cubes. Or upgrade yourself to higher cubes. So the cubes are just, it's two points for a set. Yep. And then most cubes get seven points. Oh. Well, that's going to be you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel pretty confident on that. So it's just... But most here also get seven, although I am in just second there. Just going to get two points. For that. So can he not get some One. I will use the activist to upgrade. Uh, actually... Use it to upgrade yeah, your level three abilities seem very powerful. It's just a matter of getting yeah. there and... Drawing the cards. Uh, um, yeah. All right. my leader so it's kind of neat i can see that all my tiles are going to be explored and most of your characters are going to be upgraded to level three so it is interesting yeah. that you eventually get there then it's just the timing of how you use it all which you know it could be some people could prefer like oh i can only upgrade characters so far but it feels like right, this one right. is because you're drawing random cards you want more options all right i get one point staying ahead of you there I am then going to switch uh, yellow and red, and then switch green and yellow. I'm going to spend an action, move the druid into the hub, and gain a favor and two credits. I'm going to spend one and move the rogue into the harbor, which is pretty good because I can spend a carbon and a hydrogen to gain five prestige. Dang. I know. Then I'm going to spend two to move the cleric to the pool and get three points. Everything just gives me points. <laughs> and then... And then, I don't know. 
I will spend one. Don't have anybody on one of those. I don't want cards. Um, do I want to move to something? That's the only one I want to move. All right, so I'll move to here to see if I can get to that one. Then I can swap to. I just don't need to, so I am done. Okay. I will play. Play the Arbiter to score one point and get another card. I will play the hacker to awaken a building. Because, you know, that's a thing. It is a thing. Um, do you know if for this? For this grant office here, it's paying a resource to move up the track. Is it also paying the cost on the track? The symbol is the same I as this one so, that has yeah. to pay. I would say you do pay. I think it's the right to be able to move up. Okay. It is interesting, though, because there you just take an action, but I guess that allows you to do it. Yeah, I would think you pay. Because, like you said, it's the same symbol. Okay. Here we go, go everybody. Stretch run. All right. I will activate the grant office. Awaken the grant office for five points. And uh, put a cube on it. And I get a red cube. Alright. Um okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll do the broker to get three money. And a resource. Carbon. Um. Runner. I will upgrade or I will visit a building and take a resource. I'll take hydrogen and I will visit. Uh, I already have hydrogen. Oh, I'll do that next. Um, first, let's use the tagger. I'll go up. I'll take back my leader and use my leader to nice. go up the track. I pay a hydrogen here to go up one. Two, two points. Um, and uh, runner. 
pieces of the building and to get a resource. I'll get a hydrogen and then I will do that hollow castle to spend one and get six points. Is that me? That is you. All right. I'm going to pay one. I'm going to move here. Cleric oh, whoops. goes to the temple. Dang it. Is it just a quick go back thing? No. It's or like a this. draw? Okay. Three cubes and I get to take a card. And I want to switch yellow and red. Which is not going to be easy. I could take... This one, although this one shouldn't be on the track, right? So our colors. Mm. Yeah. So instead, I'm gonna spend two, and I'm gonna build the casino. And the casino gives me six points. And I open the casino, which is here. And then that one needs red or purple. I don't have an easy way to do. So, will I spend two to do that? Yes. Then I can spend two to visit one? I guess I'll just get points. So I'll spend two to visit here and get four points. Last round for you. For both of us, sorry. <laughs> I get bonus points. <laughs> that was not what I meant. Excellent. Um... Hmm. Yeah, round. Oh, you can do that. Hmm? You would just been able to upgrade that character, right? Oh, the loot right there. Oh, yeah. yeah that's oh, fine. Okay. Final round. What oh, flipping the other. I feel like I've got a cushy, cushy lead. Seems pretty good. But we'll see. Things can get less cushy quick. Uh, I'll pay the hacker to build the old company spire. Five points. So I'll use my laser I can get three points plus it's not very exciting. I can get three. 
three points if I go up a track. So I'll just do a thing to score six points. I guess I will use the leader to, uh, you know, this is green and use the. Use the polymath to take the prestige for one point. It's not really why it is. Um, and I will play the. I'll use the leader to get six points. Yes. There you go. And that's that. All right, I don't so get my point to Don't score around. five points. Yeah. And I'm good. All right. I cannot promise such things. I will swap these two. And then move one, two, three. So I get two points. There. And two. And then. Um, is there a way to do that? No. Nope. So I'll swap these two. And then spend one to gain a blue cube. Uh, and then. I will. Give me a point. I guess I'll just spend one to spend this to move up blue and get a blue cube. That doesn't really help me, but one point. I did not score five points. I had explored everything, so there is nowhere left there to go. The bonuses. Yeah. All right. So that is the end. So now we go to this. So this is most on here. So you get seven points, and then I'm tied for second, so I get three. Okay. You want to move those up? And then I think I have the most cubes, and you have the second yeah. most, so seven and three. So okay. all that was a wash. <laughs> Back to where we started. The then sets of cubes. I've only got three, so that's six points. And I get ten points, which I think just slides down, right? Yep. And then... Remaining resources. And I have five, so I just get Money one point. Yeah. So I get one as well. There we go. Wow, two point differential. Sure. There you go. Right. So the adventurers have uh, out prestige the mm, underground. Yes. Your yes. Uh, your scoundrel art. What is it? Street art or something? Was not not to compare. I actually should look at what yeah. my theme was for my adventurers. Let me see. Adventurers explore the new urban environments rapidly growing around free radicals. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, I I'll think uh, I think I could have pulled it off. I made one one critical mistake at the end, because oh no, well, because I'm thinking back my my second to last turn, I did this tagger thing, where I just moved up the track with the leader, uh -huh. um, but I think maybe oh, I should have people see what you're pointing at. So I want to draw the camera. Good. Oh, yes. I think maybe doing this uh, level three teacher over again instead oh, of yeah. doing the leader would have let me basically do the yeah. leader plus score plus do something. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, well, there's the game, everybody. I'll we'll go up here. And uh, I don't know. I hate saying final thoughts because it's like we played it once. <laughs> so um, basically there's two games going on, right? There's your mm. board and then there's the common board. I, I've been surprised in both games that the common board, there's more going on there than it looks like. This, uh, the knowledge track is interesting. You're basically just gaining these cubes and points, right? Like, yeah. you're trying to fight for control of that. 
these buildings tend to open up a lot more than you think they're going to. Using them is an interesting part. Both, I think both of us just, you had relatively easy access to using buildings because you had two different that could do that. Uh, at the beginning, I had terrible access to it. And then eventually I got there. Because gotcha. it's like, you needed level two here, level three on yeah, the hacker to be able to, to, be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so there wasn't, wasn't a lot to get there. But once... So I was able to do it. Like this level three teacher was was quite good for using the buildings. So what did you think of this common board? Um, I don't know. I didn't feel like a lot of uh like tension with the, what you were doing. I don't. Know. I kind of felt like I was just doing my own thing, yeah. and I don't know. Um, I. Like, it wasn't wasn't that exciting to me to know that you opened up buildings because it helped you a ton to use them. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I was a little confused, like, not really knowing where I was going, certainly, at the beginning. I, I felt very lost at the beginning of this game. Um, yeah, this, I mean, this feels like a way that it ties through. everybody together. I actually think the most interesting part is the cards. The way we can all use the cards and interact with the cards is the key part. The knowledge track is just something to score extra points, right? It's just like some other mechanism by which to distinguish point scoring and, and gaining of the cubes. What did you think of your individual faction? Um, Hard to say, but I don't think I would play it again. I think I'd want to try a different one and see if I like them better. Wasn't that fond of it. Yeah, mine, mine was more interesting. The last one I played was, like, my turns were really fast. Like, it was just very straightforward. I was, like, singers. I was, like, a band or something. And I could uh -huh. put people either... I had two stages, like, front stage and backstage. And you're trying to make sets. So you don't have to make sets, but if you make sets, you get bonuses. So basically, yeah. look at your hand. You're like, I have red people on this stage and blue people on this stage. So the red's going there, the blue's going there. <laughs> and then, the, like, it was just kind of predetermined. You know what I mean? Yeah, this that's... one felt like I was making choices, and actually the most interesting part of my faction was I could swap the characters if I had two, the two colors. Right. So getting cards that allowed me to swap the characters gave me like more movement. I was able to explore my entire board, so I don't know where I would go beyond there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I felt a little stuck was like, well, I just draw the four cards each turn, and those are the four actions that I do. Right. And you do get to choose once you've upgraded them, but you probably go with the higher one. So I, I don't know. It was, I, I didn't feel like I had a, a, so much in options because it was like the order. I chose the order I played them, but a lot of time it didn't matter too much, the order. Mm. Um, so that would lead me to t two other questions in my mind, which would be, are there 10 plays in this game? And are there more than 10 plays in this game? Right? Like that's, right. that's the ultimate question. So I love asymmetry. Asy asymmetric factions is like I'm in let's try it I want to see how they all play um, these are pretty sparse right you can read through it's really nice they give you all the other factions so you see you got boards with the other factions and then uh, and they're on the back of ours they give you a sheet for each one what's really nice which is actually what I sent to you Brienne which was a little write up of each of the factions mm -hmm. not only like thematically what they're doing which the theme is not super strong in this game right we can get past that but this gives you a, a write-up of each faction so i was able to send those to you and then you were able to say like oh i want to play that faction right yeah i don't know if i read through all these i'd be like but i think seven out of ten are like yeah. oh that's what i want to do but for the most part i like asymmetric so i feel like i could get 10 plays out of this game now 10 games where i was teaching 10 different people every time could be a little rough for me where like I have to do the teach every time or four players like trying to get everybody to do right. their factions. Right. Um, but you were pretty independent on like it wasn't that complex yeah. that I had to figure out. Well, Matt was more helpful Matt than was I was. Helpful. Thank you, Matt. So how do you feel about ten the ten factions? Like do you think uh, you would play through I ten? I mean, again? I think I would play it again and try a different faction. Um and and that's cool that you get to play them. I think uh I also really like asymmetry in a game and i think it's cool that they they went with the idea of like kind of extreme asymmetry because right. like you know when i think of asymmetry i think maybe like 
oh, dominant species. You're playing the same game, but you have that one little yeah. extra ability that sets your your family of animals apart. But like in this one, they're so different. That's cool. But I also felt like I literally had no idea what you were doing right, through right. the game. It was pretty solid. You just solitaire. did your thing. I was like, oh, he's scoring some points. <laughs> uh, Mostly you know, cheating. I some stuff is getting built. I'm not like, it would, I would have to really, really peer over here and get in your face right. to see what the hell you're even doing. And, and so, like, if there was, uh, you know, places for me to be like oh what's brent gonna do i have to anticipate that and do like it's not gonna happen because i had yeah. no idea what you were doing right, right. um so i i kind of don't like that about it because I, you know i mean on your turn i can plan my turn but i didn't know what you were doing it was just like yeah okay he's doing something right right like and people call like that multiplayer solitaire right we're all doing our own thing and there's some games where it's like well we're all doing our own thing but there's going to be some timing that's a key issue, but since we're taking these separate turns where we're not fighting over that stuff, it's not a big deal. So for me, the 10 factions comes down to like, if I play at six and there's one good one and five duds, I'm probably not playing the other four, like at that yeah. point, right? But if I play six and five of them were fun and there was one dud, right. I'm probably going to keep going, I don't think I'm playing this game more than 10 times. I Maybe I would cycle around to play the one or two that I found really interesting. Right. They don't, like... From what I've seen, there isn't, like, a dexterity one where suddenly it's, like, play Jenga <laughs> while everybody... You know what I mean? So I don't know that anything that stands out. But, like, right. Ideas for an expansion. <laughs> um, so... Now, then, that that begs the question, when enter, like, with these hobby board games, is 10 plays bad? 10 plays isn't that really plays bad. Is plenty of Right? Like, like you've got a pretty good... You got a pretty good game there, but, like, is it 10 because you wanted to say you played all 10 factions? Like, is it 10 mediocre plays? Yeah. Or is it 10 stellar plays? Then you're probably going to want to play again, though. So, I, I, to me, when I'm looking at this game, it's kind of like, you've got to watch our play or other plays or somebody's video, and then, or it's at a game group and you get a chance to play it. It doesn't feel like a game that I would tell people, like, run out and buy this, right? Yeah. It's like, Check this out. Maybe this will be of interest to you. If you like asymmetry, you can find a faction or two you like. But again, I don't know if I liked two factions. If I'd be like, everybody play this game, I'm going to play the same two factions. Right. I feel like I want to change every time and, and have them all be interesting. Yeah. yeah, I feel like since it's like the big thing of this game, you would want to have... Like, if you're going to play this, you're going to want to play... Oh, I'm going to just do random factions every time. I'm just going to you know mix it up and constantly be doing different stuff um but it's cool i mean you know i think that if it if it is worth 10 plays then that's good and it, but it's not great like right. you know uh the real bbt heads will know that last week we played cascadia that is a game that i'm gonna go ahead and uh after a week of borrowing it and playing it i'm gonna put that as this is this is a great game cascadia yeah, because yeah. i took that and i've played that game 10 times in the last week yeah. and will play it 20 more times no doubt like uh even though it doesn't have 10 different factions to do i mean you get to mix up the cards that you use but it's mostly the same game but it's very good um so I mean I, I like this game. I, I didn't. Yeah, no, it was. It's definitely it, fun. It's not. I wouldn't not put it fun. in the in the greatness category. Right. Um. Yeah, I feel like there was one other thing I was gonna say. Oh, I it does to me. I do want to play a four player game of it because I want to see how much stuff opens up and how interactive mm. this becomes. Because here That's we're true. pushing the other ones around. There's no mechanism of like they naturally move up. So I could see in like a two-player game, if the lowest one moved up every other round, then they'd be moving up to compete with us. Right. And so in a multiplayer game, you'd be competing there, which could make it more interesting. Like you're fighting for the three points, but in the cubes, you were just, I was just getting plus four points and here you're getting plus four points. Unless you push that green one, you know what I mean? Or, and then these buildings weren't interesting, but what if different players had different ones and what if we opened up our own where we could get, or somebody else did, where we could get our bonus? Mm. So I do feel like there's a little... Our, our home building. No. You did the Hollow Castle at the end. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I do Did feel like it? no. I do feel like three or four players would open up more of this, and it doesn't seem to have a mechanism. So they yeah. could almost do like a draw a card in two players. Sorry, because we're on this camera. And that one starts open. And then, like I said, every fourth, eighth round, like two more open up from neutral yeah, just factions so just to like open them. So I feel like they didn't really scale that to two players. But again, it's a solitaire game. Like yeah. <laughs> it's multiplayer solitaire. But hey, our scores ended up really close. Yeah. Which becomes begs the question of like, is that just because these factions are just so well balanced? <laughs> there isn't a yeah, way to find one and hammer through it. You know what I mean? Tells me All they at least did a reasonable job balancing really asymmetric stuff. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's it. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. That's Free Radicals, which will be available from WizKids Games. We'll have them at the portal, and you can go to your friendly local game store as well. But until next time, I'm the Brant. And I'm Brienne. You're watching the BBT, and we hope you step into the portal. Bye. <laughs>